Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Normalization Part 3. I actually had a special request from a friend in Alabama to actually draw it out on the board this way. So I did. So what we have here up top, we have a customer table, order table, and a detail table. And I tried to break them out in colors. And then down here in this section below, this is the denormalized nightmare that you want to stay away from. And actually, you know, this looks pretty bad, but this is a very simplistic thing. You know, in a real world, this would be like horrible. Okay, so let's just go over it, shall we? You have a customer, we have two customers, foo and fee. Customer number one is foo, customer number two is fee. In the orders, we have two orders, number one and number two. Customer number one, right there, right? Customer number one placed an order, which is order number one, on date X. Customer new, number two placed an order, that's customer fee. He placed order number two, date Y. Order detail, okay? We have five things in the detail table. The order number, number one, has two rows. One for, you know, uh, for detail. Product A, we have five quantity. Product B, we have 10, right? That's for order number one. And then for order number two, we have three rows. Product A of 20, product B of 30, product C of 40. Now, if you forget all this stuff down here, this looks really simple. If I have to go change something like foo, it's easy to change. If I want to change something like the date, I change it in one spot. If I want to, now, here's where it goes nuts. Now, look at the lower stuff, right? Because you've taken this, which is right here, and you've denormalized it, you've got to fill in all this stuff with redundant crap this. So now you've got the customer number twice, right? Because he's got two order details. So now you've got one, one, foo, foo, one, one, X, X, right? You, it, that's horrible. So now when you want to update something, this is actually, let's see, customer number, order number, right there, those guys, that one, that one, and that one, those are your composite keys. So, and this is a very simplistic example, ladies and gentlemen. Could you imagine if you had one order that had a thousand items? I mean, this, this table would just be huge with redundant data. Um, and when you went to do updates, if you went, well, I need to update, uh, you know, where the date is something, or, or can you imagine the screw-ups of issuing an update statement on this table, right? Because it's not keyed correctly. If you didn't get the keys right and, and do your update accordingly, the engine would just go zip and blow it. So it's much easier this way. This is, you know, here you have to change. If I want to change foo, let's say I want to change foo to fum. Okay, now I've got to go change it there and I got to change it there as opposed to just change it in one spot. So again, as the data gets big, it gets worse and worse and worse. As the list grows, it gets worse and worse and worse. You want to normalize. Customer table, order table, order detail. Now, the date in the order table is directly related or dependent on the key. This is a foreign key. Name, directly dependent on the primary key. That's third normal form. Order detail, you have product, and normally this would be a lookup to another table, but I put it in here for giggles. Right there, the key. Quantity, same thing, the key. Third normal form, 3NF, your columns, the rows, the values here are dependent on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't stress that enough. Anyway, I hope this uh, explains it for you, a real world example. Remember, your OLTP systems, get your tables in 3 and F all the time. And uh, if you're going to do uh, reporting, push the data to outside, to another database. It is totally okay and very common to have to take a database and export it to five or six reporting databases. 
that are each configured differently with star configurations, each one tailored to get a certain type of data out for that particular department or sector or whatever, right? It's perfectly normal. I mean, I can tell you that I've done a whole ton of projects for a big chip manufacturing company here in the Pacific Northwest, and we built, we took data from all over the world and pulled it into one database and then transformed the, you know what, out of it and spit out lots of different things for lots of different people because that's how it had to happen and it happened every day, that cycle. So, uh, but you don't mess with your OLTP systems. They're not built for reporting, you know? You can really drag them to a scene. Remember, SQL Server and Oracle and whatnot, if you confuse the engine, I know, probably hate to say it, but I think more with SQL Server. If it gets confused, if you're doing too much activity on a table, it will engine will just give up and it'll escalate to a full table lock done it's just it'll lock the whole table you don't want that so don't mess with your OLTP system too much you know fine-tune it for inserts updates and deletes and remember whenever you're doing inserts and updates right or deletes the more indexes you have on a table the slower the in inserts and updates and deletes because the engine has to go and update those indexes, right? Just keep all that in mind. But use indexes whenever you can to speed up your queries for the OLTP side of things. This is Michael Bowman. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, mbowman at verticalworks.com. Have a great day coding. Talk to you later.